Hello everybody. So in this section we're talking about momentum of our protocol. So first of all, we have to look at the uh, expectation, expectation value of x. So for example, what is the average position x of our protocol? Well, so average of x is equals to the integral, of course, from negative infinity to positive infinity of x times our function in terms of x and t squared dx but now the, the question is what does this actually mean well if we were to take for example a particle and measure its position so if we imagine a particle and we have this wave function now what does our x mean well x means that what is the average well the average will pretty much be in the middle in our case that's going to be the average of positions. However, if we take a measurement of one of our systems one time, then we know that the particle at our point will be in this exact position. So now what happens after, when we measure right after? Well, surprisingly, the particle will be at the same position again. There's no change in our uh, particle movement. Why does this happen? Well, because the particle didn't exactly move in that time. So how can we actually find this expectation value? Well, in this case, we'll have to set many experiments all with the same oops, with the same function, initial function. And then once we find that, for example, the position will be found here for this point, here for this point, and then for another point, we will be found and another point here. The average of this position will be equals to our expectation value that we just found. So it's kind of different uh, to imagine how this goes, but uh, how this happens. But um, uh, as long as you understand that uh, if you measure right away the position of particle, you will find if multiple times you will find that the position of the particle will be the same. It actually hasn't moved. But if you instead have several particles with the same properties, position, same state, and you measure the particles at the position at the same time, the average will be equals to the value that we found over here. Now, however, what if we want to find the change in our expression value? Well, change over time, of course, because the particle moves over time. Well, then we can just say take our expectation value and derive it in terms of t, right? So we have to derive what's inside our equation. So we would simply have d over dt of infinity plus infinity x and then the same function that we have on the top. And we can bring this inside and have negative infinity to positive infinity x and then the partial derivative in terms of t of our uh, phi, sorry, I believe the name is, no, it's not phi, uh, psi, sorry, squared dx. And we can rewrite this as a um, derivative, sorry, as a, as a multiplication of psi like this so you would have that it's equals to derivative of negative infinity to infinity of well in this case we're deriving actually let me show you what i'm, what I'm gonna do so we're gonna have x again um and then partial derivative in terms of t of this value right here that can be simplified with oops, uh, by putting in i h bar over 2m in front and then derive this in terms of x and again so we're going to have the first part so our psi complex conjugate times the derivative of our psi in terms of x minus, and here the opposite, the derivative of psi complex conjugate in terms of x 
times our psi dx and the resolution of this. However, if we um, um, if we integrate by parts, we end up uh, sorry, yes, if we integrate by parts, we end up having um, something much simpler, and so that is equals to negative i h bar over two or sorry over m, and then the integral of our psi complex conjugate of our psi or inter derived in terms of x dx. And as you can see, oh sorry, this is of course is the result of our equitation value derived in terms of t, which is pretty much equals to our average velocity if you think about it. Uh, it's not much different than that. So now since we know that our momentum is equals to m b, when our expectation momentum, of course, will be equals to uh, the expectation value is the same because the average mass is of the same mass, doesn't change. It's going to be equals to our average velocity, right? So if we say the average momentum is equals to m oops, times, we found that the average velocity is equals to this part over here. we found what our uh, momentum is. Um, the book actually likes to write it in a, uh, what it calls more suggestive way, or so that the average x is equals to the integral of psi complex conjugate, that in terms of x, times psi dx, and the average momentum will be equals to Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, here we would simplify our two masses, of course. I forgot to write that. And so our momentum will be equals to our psi complex conjugate times negative i h and then partial derivative in terms of x of our psi dx. And now, of course, we can use this V that we found earlier, our expectation policy for all the forms that we can think of. So, for example, for energy, for kinetic energy, which we have one half mv squared, we can say that the expectation energy is going to be equal to one half m expectation energy squared. Or simply, P squared over 2m, uh, just a little easier. And then, of course, there is angular momentum as well. So we can say the angular momentum is equals to r cross mv, which is, of course, just equals to, uh, so here will be actually m and then r cross v. So we can just rewrite as r cross mv, that is equals to, this one is equals to momentum. So r cross P. Um, as you can see, it becomes pretty easy to resolve after. Um, that is awful.